G'day everyone, welcome to my art channel, Brushes with Beck. Today's video is a continuation of last week's video where I showed you the beginning of this drawing of an otter. Now this is a drawing focused on wet fur and colour really, because as you can see there is a lot of colour in this piece. Otters are not blue or green, but certainly when their wet fur is reflecting off the sky and trees you do get those colours in the fur. So to begin with, for this week's video you can see I'm starting with the nose there. So I'm adding in sort of the layout of colours, so those mapping in the darker areas and putting in some of that the lighter tone of the nose and blending that out a little bit before refining those darker and lighter areas on the nose. So that was a pretty easy process because there's not a lot of detail on this nose, it's more about um, colour mapping and those subtle dark areas and then there's those subtle rim highlights around the edges of the nose as well which really helps things to stand out. So that was a pretty easy process before I moved back onto the fur to continue along with that. Now this fur, I, I realised <laughs> continuing on with this because as I said if you watched last week's video you'll know that I started this piece quite some time ago and I put it away for a long time because it was it was a lot at the time and I was struggling with it and working on this some more um, I realized why I put this away to begin with because it is very very challenging there is so much going on in my reference photo regarding color and then detail as well that it's very hard to focus on just small areas and what specifically you need to put in to make it look accurate. So it's a very very challenging piece um, and I found putting in some of that colour in the underlayers like that blue and you saw me put in some I think it was like a maroney red tone in there and then putting in my first strands over those colours um, really helps to you know get that colour tone in the fur and get that fur sort of looking like it's reflecting those colours. So it's a very um, complicated process and I spend a lot of time looking at my reference photo and then I draw something and I look back at my reference photo and I think well that red doesn't really look anything like that. So <laughs> it's been very challenging and I don't know that it's going to turn out looking like my reference but I'm really enjoying the bold colours regardless. Like I think it's going to turn out well even if it doesn't look like my reference so closely in terms of my colour choices but I think it's still going to work well as a piece um, once it's all finished. So it's a matter of getting to that stage. So you can see I'm just, I'm not really working in one area like one big patch at once. I'm finding I'm having to move back and forth between different areas because one area becomes quite overwhelming and so I have to do a little bit in another area and then come back to what I was working on previously. Because as I said there is so much going on in my reference photo in regards to colours and reflections and fur strands and it's sort of a bit a bit much to take in all at once. So I'm leaving sort of my dark fur strands till last and putting some lighter strands over the top of that as well. As you can see just for those little really shiny highlights and doing my best to get it making to get it looking shiny and wet. So in terms of how that's going, I'm not sure yet. I think it will all come together better towards the end of the piece, as I said. So this has been very, very challenging for me and even though I've had a lot of practice with pastel mat and with drawing fur since I first started this piece, it's still an extremely challenging piece to work on. So as I said, moving into another area and trying to decide what colours to put in those underlayers is very, very challenging because there's so many colours in there, red tones, blue tones, purple tones, green tones, etc, etc. There's just a lot going on and I found it hard to choose the right colours and enough colours without it becoming muddy. That was quite challenging. So realising I hadn't finished off the nose and I needed to finish that off before I started in on this fur on the cheek here. So the nose, 
all together came up very very nicely refining those details I add a little bit of blue in so it sort of tied in a bit better with the rest of the piece and I think that worked out quite nicely before I before I moved back to this cheek area and like I said I had trouble with the under layers in this area because there's so much going on color wise and it did get quite muddy because I used so many colors I just wasn't quite sure where to go with it so I just kind of picked a few things put them down on the paper and it's not so much hoping for the best and choosing any color it was <laughs> it's not just a random I just have an educated guess as to what colors I would need to lay down but I really didn't know how it was going to turn out like if it was going to come together it was very very challenging I felt like my first strokes weren't quite right and then I couldn't get it to blend out nicely so I was trying to blend it out with the warm greys to smooth it out a little bit and then I realized it wasn't blue enough so I had to add blues and there's a whole lot of back and forth in this because um, it was very very challenging to do like I said getting getting an eye for what colors are in my reference photo has been extremely challenging but as I said as a whole piece as long as the piece itself ties together when this piece is say mounted on a wall or something you're not going to have a reference photo next to it to compare it to so it doesn't really matter if I'm a bit more exaggerated with colors because it's not going to be sitting next to a photo where people can go oh that's not right because as a piece itself it will stand alone it will stand up for itself so just working through and just trying to get in get as much work done on this this week as possible and I didn't get as far as I wanted but I did make some really good progress that area just above the nose was a major area that I wanted to get done as well as that cheek that cheek was extremely challenging uh, there's still whiskers to go over the top of all of this once I've finished but they'll have to go on last obviously because they are white and they need to go over the top of all the other fur so like I said it's a very long process and um, I'm just doing the best I can with this I'm sorry I'm not very informative in this video with how to draw wet fur but I think the really important thing is to make sure you've got those really dark deep shadows and your fur looks more clumped together than just strokes laid out next to each other so you're gonna have a bit more misdirection of the fur like you can see in that cheek there going all different directions and you're going to have some really obvious shiny parts and some really dark parts as well next to it so you got to try and make it look a little bit more clumped together uh, rather than just flowing fur next to each other so thank you very much for watching I do hope you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up comment down below subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again next week for another one stay creative